In this video, we're going to focus on solving absolute value equations that contain inequalities. We're going to graph it on a number line and also represent the solution using interval notation. So let's start with the first one. Let's say if you get an equation that looks like this. The absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 4. How can we solve for x? So what we need to do is write two equations. Anytime you try to get rid of the absolute value, you need to write two equations. A positive one, which looks just like the original one, and a negative one. So for the negative version, make sure you change the direction of the inequality and change the sign from positive 4 to negative 4. And then solve for x. So here we need to subtract both sides by 3. So 4 minus 3 is 1. Therefore, x is greater than 1. For the next example, we need to subtract both sides by 3. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So x is less than negative 7. At this point, we can graph the solution on a number line. So let's say 0 is right there. 1 is to the right of 0, and negative 7 is to the left. Now, x is greater than 1. Do we need an open circle or a closed circle? Since it's greater but not equal to, we need an open circle. And because it's greater than, we need to shade to the right side. Now the other answer, x is less than negative 7, so we got to shade to the left side. Now how can we represent this solution using interval notation? All the way to the left is negative infinity, and to the right, positive infinity. So notice that the shaded region is between negative infinity and negative 7, and also 1 to infinity. So the answer in interval notation is negative infinity to negative 7 union 1 to infinity. Now, because we have an open circle, we're going to use parentheses and not brackets, since it doesn't include negative 1, I mean negative 7 and 1. Now, let's say if you have an inequality that contains fractions. How would you solve for x? Just like before, we're going to write two equations. One is going to be greater than 5, the other is going to be less than negative 5. Don't forget to change the sign as well as the inequality. Now, let's focus on the one on the left. What's the first thing that we should do to make our lives easier? If you have fractions, it's best to multiply by a number that's going to clear away the fraction. So, we need a number that can go into where that is a multiple of 3 and 4. What is the least common multiple of 3 and 4? If you're not sure, multiply the two numbers. So, 12 is going to work. Now, let's distribute 12 to every term in this expression. So what's 12 times 2 over 3x? Or what's 12 times 2 thirds? So we can do 2 times 12, which is 24, divided by 3, which is 8. Or we could say 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Either case, it's 8x. Now, what's 12 times 1 fourth? Or 12 divided by 4? So this is going to be 3. And 5 times 12 is 60. So now we can solve for x. Let's add 3 to both sides. So 8x is greater than 63. And if we divide both sides by 8, x is greater than 63 over 8. So this is the first answer. And now let's do the same for the left side. Let's multiply everything by 12. So 2 thirds x times 12 is still going to be 8x. 12 times 1 fourth is still 3, and 12 times negative 5 is negative 60. So let's add 3. So 8x is less than negative 60 plus 3, which is negative 57. And if we divide it by 8, x is less than negative 57 over 8. So now let's graph the solution on a number line. So here's 0, 
63 over 8, that's just under 8. 64 over 8 is 8, but it's somewhere to the right side. Negative 57 over 8 is somewhere on the left side. Now, we're going to use open circles because we don't have the underline. It's greater than or less than. Now, x is greater than 63 over 8, so we got a shade to the right. And for the other one, x is less than negative 57 over 8, so we're going to shade to the left. So we can see what the answer is going to be. It's going to be from negative infinity to negative 57 over 8, union 63 over 8 to infinity. Let's try one more example. So this time, there's going to be numbers outside of the absolute value expression on the left. Now, for an example like this, it's best if you isolate the absolute value before you write two equations. So let's subtract 4 from both sides. So it's going to be negative 2 absolute value, 2x plus 1, and 5 minus 4 is 1. Now we need to move the negative 2 to the other side before we write two equations. So let's divide both sides by negative 2. So then the absolute value of 2x plus 1 is greater than negative 1 half. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, the direction of the inequality changes sign. So now at this point, we can write two equations. So the first equation is going to remain the same. And the second equation, we need to change the direction of the inequality and change the sign from negative to positive 1 half. So now let's solve for x. Now the first thing I'm going to do is multiply everything by 2 just to get rid of the fraction. 2x times 2 is 4x. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. So now let's subtract both sides by 2. So negative 1 minus 2, that's negative 3. And then if we divide both sides by 4, we'll get the first answer. x is greater than negative 3 over 4. Now for the next one, Let's subtract both sides by 1. So 2x is less than, well actually before we do that, let's multiply it by 2. So it's going to be 4x plus 2 is less than 1. So if we subtract both sides by 2, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Divide by 4, x is less than negative 1 fourth. Now let's plot it on a number line. Now you have to be careful with this question because there's something different about it. But I'm going to solve it first and then we'll talk about it. So here's 0, here's negative 3 fourths, and negative 1 fourth. So x is greater than negative 1 fourth. That means we got a, an open circle and we have the shade to the right. Now, x is less than negative 1 fourth, so that's an open circle, and that we have to shade to the left. Notice that we're shading everywhere. The blue line touches negative 3 over 4, so that includes negative 3 over 4. And the red part, it touches negative 1 fourth, so it includes it. So therefore, whenever it goes in both directions, wherever you, whenever you shade everything on the number line, the answer is negative infinity to infinity. That means x could be anything. And let's prove it. The absolute value of any number is never less than 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. The absolute value of a positive number is positive, And the absolute value of a negative number is positive. So whenever you have an absolute value expression, it's always going to be 0 or more. 0 is greater than negative 1 half. The absolute value of a positive number will be greater than negative 1 half. The absolute value of a negative number will also be greater than negative 1 half. So it doesn't matter what you plug into this equation, 
the absolute value will always be positive. This equation is always true. That's why it's all solution. It's from negative infinity to infinity. Now let's say if you get a problem like this. We need to go over one more example, considering the last example that we discussed. The absolute value of 2x plus 4, let's say it's less than or equal to negative 8. Now think about it. Can 0 be less than or equal to negative 8? The answer is no. 0 is greater than negative 8. Can a positive number, let's say 7, be less than or equal to negative 8? The answer is no. The absolute value expression will give you a number that's either 0 or greater than 0. It will never give you a negative number. So therefore, this equation is always false, no matter what value of x you plug in. If you plug in 1 for x, the absolute value of 6 is not less than negative 8. It's greater than 8. If you plug in, let's say, negative 5 for x, that's negative 10 plus 4, the absolute value of negative 6 is not less than negative 8. 6 is greater than negative 8. So no matter what value of x you plug in, this equation will not be true. There's no solution. Now you have to be careful because it's very easy to overlook that fact. Let's say if you try to solve the equation. Let's see what would happen if we try to solve it. So typically, we would write two equations. And it would appear as if we can get an answer for this problem, even though it should be no solution. If we divide by 2 on the left side, x is less than or equal to negative 6. For the right side, if we divide by 2, x is equal to or greater than 2. So if we plot it, x is greater than or equal to 2, so we need to shade to the right. x is less than or equal to negative 6. So it looks like this is OK. But if we plug in 3 into the equation, 3 appears to be a solution. If we plug in 3, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 is not less than negative 8. 10 is greater than negative 8. So this is false. If you plug in negative 8 or negative 9, that's negative 18 plus 4, which is negative 14. The absolute value of negative 14 is not less than negative 8. 14 is greater than negative 8. So it's not going to be true. So be careful with absolute value functions that is less than or equal to a negative number because those are the ones that are not true. If it's greater than or equal to a negative number, that could work. Or if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to a positive number, that could work. But watch out for the ones where it's less than or equal to a negative number. It's not going to work.